Welcome back to your video tutorials online, day number eight. Day number eight, exercise one. Okay, today we are going to be working with, continue working with our Excel 2013 student files. We are going to open unit B. We are going to open file exb2 and we are going to save this copy using the save command. Rename this file as Candy Supply Inventory. Okay, the functions that we are going to be using are the following. As follow, use the auto sum function. We will be using the average, max, and minimum functions. We are going to resize columns to display your data. Copy formulas with a cell reference. Copy formulas. I'm going to play a next scenario of a 3% drop on the stack items for this particular exercise. And we are also going to be applying borders to our cells. Okay. Now let me go ahead and move this up to the side. During the webinars, I'm going to ask you to ping your Excel 2013 student files to your IO Explorer. So from here, we right click. We are going to see our folder pinned into the IO Explorer. One click. It will open. We're going to move it to the side. And right here we have unit B. We're going to open unit B. We are going to open EXB2. Okay, we are going to be saving this using the save as command. It's going to under your computer and it's going to be saved under your Excel 2013 files. Okay, the name of this file is going to be a spreadsheet, it's going to be candy. Supply company, and uh, I will be including the date, and then click on save. And here we, here we have our table. Okay, so it looks like this is an inventory for a company. Okay, and uh, the name of the company, Candy Supply Company, inventory in cases. Okay, we have storage one, two, three through five. These are the different products that they have on stack. And how many cases we have for storage? Okay, uh, right here we already have a total. Okay, uh, anytime that we want to delete a, uh, any cell, any cell, we left click, hold it, and drag it over to select the range, and then we click delete on the keyboard. Okay, why are we are gonna do that? Because right now we're gonna be using the auto sum to get the totals by columns and by rows. Okay. Once we have the totals, this uh, particular project is asking for a 30% drop. On the last exercise, we worked with a 20% increment. So this time it's going to be a drop. We are going to be using the, uh, uh, the average, maximum, and minimum values. And we are going to have a change of 1.1%. That 1.1 stands for 10%, okay? So this number, we're just going to go ahead and change it to 10%. Okay, just to make it easier to understand this table. Okay, and using this 10%, we are going to be playing a what if. Okay, what if we have a 10% increment, okay, over the totals. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it. Okay, now right here we have our, uh, all our data. We are going to be selecting the range B4 through F9 and just with you, by using the arrow so one click and there's all totals by columns and by rows. Okay, now that we have the totals, let's go ahead and apply. Okay, all borders, just the difference where we have the totals. Okay. Um, into the cells that we apply a formula. Okay, now right here we're gonna play uh, this is scenario. Okay, if we have a 3% drop, okay, remember like in the other exercise, so we have equal, that's gonna be based into the total, okay, and we are gonna be playing, see, a drop in this case. Okay, so how we're gonna do that? See, right here we have equals B9. Okay, now. We want to find that the 30% drop. Okay, so let's go ahead and get another cell here. 
okay but I should have typed in see my 30% before I start working on my formula now I'm into the edit mode if I want to exit what can I use I'm going to be using escape escape is going to take me out of the edit mode okay now we here remember that on the other um, on the other worksheet that we use okay um, I recommend that we always use a cell reference why because then we could change that number and our data is going to be updated automatically okay so from here we're going to be using equals we have the total and we're going to be multiplying this times three percent okay so if we have a drop it's going to be the drop is going to be three point thirty six point six okay now from this total now that we know how much is going to be the drop we're going to be deducting See, B11 from B9. So out of the 122 total, we are going to de be deducting 36.6 on the hidden. Okay, so now the new total is going to be 85.4 with a 30% decrease. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get another one. Okay, equals, we have that total times 30%. Enter. Okay, and then again, here's another equals times 20%, and that's the drop. Okay, equals times 20% enter. Okay, now right here we are gonna go ahead and copy this formula. Okay, anytime that you guys want to copy a formula, we click into the cell where we have a formula. We are going to click into our copy command. We are going to have the wavy lines going around. And we are going to be selecting one, two, three cells that we, the cells that we are going to place a formula. Okay. Now from here we could just go directly to paste. And under paste is going to give us different options. Okay. We have the live preview. So in this case we want to copy the formula. So you guys are going to be looking for formulas. Okay. Normally, when we uh, copy and paste a formula, you guys may want to check each of the different options that we have. We have the live preview, and that's going to allow us to see what are we going to be getting before we paste it, before we decide for one of them. In this case, it's just going to be the formula. Okay, so I'm going to click formula, and just like that, there's my 30% new result. Okay, if we have. Uh -huh, for each of these different type of products. Okay. Now, when we're done, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit, um, hit escape. But before we hit escape, anytime that we pay something, see, we're gonna have this little guy here. If we open that, we have the same options that we have under the paste on the top left corner below file. Okay. But we are using the correct formula. Okay. The, so we just click away. Now to get rid of these wavy lines, we just hit escape, and there we go. Okay. Now we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the average. Okay. How we're gonna get the average? We're gonna, I'm gonna use equals average. I put my parentheses, and then I'm gonna select the data. Remember, on average, we don't include the total. Okay. And then we hit enter. Now the average is 24.4 per storage. Okay. Now right here again we're gonna copy this formula. Okay, so again we're gonna click into the cell. We use a copy command. We're gonna have those wavy lines going around this cell that we copy. Now we're gonna select the three empty cells where we are gonna paste the formula. Use the drop down arrow because by clicking into the drop down arrow is gonna give us these options. And again, see, we're looking for formula. Click, and there's our results. Okay, now I'm gonna hit escape to get rid of those wavy lines. Now, anytime that you guys copy a formula, just to verify, okay, I'm gonna double click into the cell. When I double click into C13, see, I get to see my formula equals average C4 to C8. So the formula is correct. If I hit enter, uh-huh, that I'm just gonna exit the edit mode. Okay, 
So I'm going to verify one more. We can also come up here into the formula bar and click. And there's my formula. So my function equals average, and then we have the range. So the formula is correct. So I'm also going to hit enter. Click on save. Okay. Now we have the maximum value equals max. Open my parentheses. And then again, it's going to be base into the cells. B4 through B8. We hit enter. Now to save time, we're also going to go ahead and copy the formula. One, two, three cells, and then we're going to paste the formula using the FX. Okay. I'm going to hit escape to get rid of the ruby lines. If I double click into the cell, okay, just to verify that my formula is correct. And yes, we have the correct formulas. Okay, anytime that you guys copy a formula and paste it, make sure, make sure that you guys at least check one or two to make sure that we are correct. Okay, now minimum value equals mean. My, um, sorry, uh, that's equals. Okay, M I N minimum. That's my function. Open the parentheses because I'm gonna select the range that I wanna use. B4 to B8. We close our parentheses and hit enter. The minimum value here is 11. Storage 5 as a minimum value. Maximum value is 45, so it's storage 1. Okay, now we want to copy this formula. We go again to see the copy command also has a drop down arrow. But we have those two options copy and copy as a picture. Normally, I don't like to use this because we could easily get confused and click on copy as a picture, and we are not gonna get the result. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example. See, copy as a picture. Now, this window is gonna open up. I'm gonna click on OK, I'm gonna paste. See, this is gonna paste the number 11 and it's gonna paste it as a picture. Why? Because when I click into that, see, the number is not right here into the formula bar. So, this is just a picture. Okay, we paste it as a picture, we can move it anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Still select it, we press delete. Okay, there you go. Now, back to the copy. So we just click into the copy command. Click. Okay, I'm going to select one, two, three cells. And we are going to paste the formula. Okay, escape to get rid of the wavy lines. I'm going to double click into the cell C15. There's my formula equals minimum value C4 through C8. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. There it goes. I'm going to check the other one. Double click. Formula is correct. If I also use the escape key, I'm going to exit the, ex, uh, uh -huh, the edit mode. Okay, and this one I'm going to do that from the formula bar. Okay. Now let me click into the cell and formula is correct. If I escape, I'm also gonna exit the edit mode. Okay, so there is okay. So we copy the formula, copy the formula is always gonna okay, it's gonna help us to save time. Okay, now right here we have an scenario okay, change 20%. Now this change it doesn't exactly say about one, but since this is into a column, okay, let's say that we're gonna have a change into the total here of 10%. How we're gonna do this, okay? So we're gonna start this 10% increase is gonna be based into the total, okay? So we're gonna be using the equals here's the total times i1 and enter. Okay, so if we have a, um, okay, this is going to be an increment of the temp of 10%. Okay, so an increment of 10% over 148 is just going to be, okay, an increment of 14.8. Okay, now, in this case, we're going to say, okay, but we want to get the total, including the 10% increment and get it into this cell. Okay, so how can we do that? 
I'm gonna come up here instead of having the 10% we're just gonna type in 1.1 we're gonna delete the percent and hit enter now look what happens when I type that in Excel is changing this to 110% okay now it's giving me the see the formula is updated automatically and I have the total code in the 10 162.8 so that's including the total plus the 10 percent okay now I'm gonna go ahead and change see the 110 percent because basically see it's just the total plus the 10 percent so that's why it's giving me the total now like the other exercise or like down here see we find out first of all how much wells they drop and then we the dot the drop from the total and it gives us a nice number right here. Okay? So in this case we are gonna save ourselves using one last formula. Okay? Now I'm gonna change this percentage from um, from percentage to a general number. The general number is just gonna be changed to 1.2. Okay? Now basically 1.1 I'm sorry 1.1 is 10 percent. If we type in 1.2 it's 20%, 1.3, 30%, 1.4, 40%. Okay, that's how Excel look at this in whole numbers with one point. Okay, now the next formula we are going to use equals 129 times 1.1 because we have a whole number plus the 10%. We hit enter. Now remember this with, with this option C, we get the total which is 129 plus the 20% included so we don't have to do it like this like this formulas here we have to create a second formula we get the total including the increase together okay now equals that total okay plus change enter total Thanks. Enter. Okay. And then again, equals total times ten percent. Okay. So here's the all new numbers, including the ten percent change. Okay. Now you guys probably gonna say, okay, and why we didn't use the we didn't copy the formula. Okay. Let's go ahead and do another exercise. Okay, up here I'm just gonna go to J1 and I'm gonna type in 1.2. This time we wanna find out, okay, an increment of 20%. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the first formula. So we have equal. Now it has to be over base into the total. Now the new total including the 10%. Okay, times 1.2. Enter. Okay, if we have an increment of 20%, it's going to be 177, new total over 148. Okay, now right here you guys are going to say, okay, how about if we copy the formula to save time? Yes, let's go ahead and use the copy command. Bring your cells, uh, select your cells. Then we go to the paste command and we use formulas. Okay, I paste it as formulas. Now let's look what we have. I'm gonna hit escape to get rid of those wavy lines. And here's my totals. Okay, so what happened here? What happened here? Okay. Okay. When we come up here and we click, let's check into the formula. I'm gonna click into the formula bar. Okay, now that we copy the formula, see what happened? We copy the formula, but Excel is trying to use the J2. Now J2 is empty. Okay. Any time that we want to copy a formula, and the formula, move, I mean, this Excel moves and tries to select the next cell, it's not gonna give us a correct number. We have zero. Another zero. Now right here, you give us a number. Let's see why. Okay, because Excel is using T. F7 138 times 177 so 0.6 it's giving us a number but the number is incorrect okay now the last one see 
So Excel, it keeps going down to the next cell, trying to use the next cell to get our formula. Okay, so this is incorrect. Okay, now, uh, welcome. I just want to welcome to the cell reference. We saw this before, the cell reference. Okay, now in this case, I mean, if I select the cell and I use equals, I click into my total, sorry, my total is here, and I multiply that by 1.2. When I hit it, enter, it's going to give me the right number. Why? Because I have a cell reference 1.2. Okay? But now, if I copy the formula again, let's go ahead and empty the cells. Now, I'm trying this one. Let's go ahead and empty. Let's delete the contents. Okay, now here's my formula. Formula is correct because we type it in. We have a cell reference to the J1. And basically, in this case, we want to use the total and multiply by J1. When we copy the formula, that's not going to work because Excel moves into the next cell. Okay, now anytime that that happens, this is what we're going to have to do. Okay. Um, if I want to use a particular cell, in this case it's J1 for the rest of my operations, we're going to need to go into the formula bar, click there, okay, and I want to make, I want to make my J1 as a static uh, cell, okay, I want to make a reference for all my formulas that I'm going to be using here, in order for me to do that, see, on my keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and click on the F4 key, F4 key, what it's going to do is going to apply a dollar sign before and after another dollar sign, the J column. Okay, so, okay, so that's going to make, see, this cell is going to make a reference to that particular cell. Now look, when we copy the formula, one, two, three, into the other three cells. We go to paste and click on formula. This time we are going to be getting the correct amounts. Okay. So anytime that you guys want to use a particular cell. Okay. To be included on every single formula. You guys are going to have to apply the dollar sign. Okay. Before and after the column. Which in this case is J1. Now the shortcut to apply that. Remember it's going to be. Dollar sign. I'm sorry, not the dollar sign. It's going to be when we click up here, we click into the F4 key and automatically it's going to give you the dollar sign before and after the J column. Okay, so to make a cell reference and be able to copy the formula, we must click on this cell with the formula to copy and then on the formula bar we click at the end of the formula and in this case we just use the shortcut F F4 on the key keyboard. To apply or dollar sign before and after the cell we want to use on every formula when we copy. And 
this the formula. Okay, so that's the cell reference. Okay, and that's also gonna give us that's gonna save a lot of time. Okay, now don't worry too much about this. Okay, let's go ahead and do another exercise. Okay, right here, let's say that we want to find out the 20%. Okay, so it's gonna be 1.3 enter. Okay, equals. Uh, it's going to be over this total times, now this is going to be 1.3. We want to find out the 20% including the total here. Now the total is going to be 192.4. Okay. Now, in this case, I'm not, um, let's go here. Okay. In this case, I'm not going to be able to use a self reference. Okay. But let me go ahead and delete this. Okay, we are going to be moving all this data. I'm going to highlight it using my four way arrow, left click holder, and drag it over just to move this to the side. Okay, now right here we're going to do another example 1.3. Okay, so equal total times 1.3, enter. Now, if we want to copy this formula, what are we going to have to do? I need to go into the formula bar. In this case, the cell reference is going to be K1. I'm going to be using my F4 key on the keyboard. That's going to apply the dollar sign before K and after K. And that's going to allow me to copy the formula correctly. Copy, select my cells, face, formulas, and there's my formulas are correct. Okay. Now, on on desktop computers, we just click on the F4 key to apply the dollar sign. Okay, on laptops, on laptops. Um, most of the time we will need to hold down the F in key and at the same time at the same time Click on the F4 key to apply the dollar sign before and after to a particular to the cell. We want to use on for formulas. Okay, and then we click on save. Okay, one more exercise here. Okay, let's say that we want to find out the 40%, 1.4, enter. Okay, so and then again, equals total times L1, enter. If we want to copy the formula, let's see what happens if we don't make a cell reference by applying the dollar sign. When we paste the formula, we're going to get zeros. And one cell, we're going to get some numbers, but that's the correct number. Okay, so what we need to do, click into that particular formula that we want to copy. And to make it a cell reference, we click into formula bar. We want to copy L1. We're going to click into the F4. Apply the dollar signs, we hit enter, and now come back to that cell, copy command, select our cells, we're going to be paste their formula, and now we have the correct numbers. Okay, so there we go. Make sure you just click on save, and this is the exercise. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close my spreadsheet here.
was my folder okay and we are gonna be adding here f d see here okay we have in parentheses okay introduction to cell reference f4 shortcut Okay. Okay. Um, all these different options that we're gonna be seeing. Okay, they are time savers. They're gonna save a lot of time, and we're gonna be doing other exercises. Okay, on the next video tutorial, uh, we will have the introduction to the out of field, the wonderful out of field. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me, and you guys, thank you for watching, and you guys have a great day. Until next video tutorial. Bye bye.